Hey, Spuds. Miss Fontaine here, and today we're going to start learning about roux. So roux is spelled R-O-U-X, and the reason we learn to make a roux is it's kind of the base for four out of your five mother sauces. And the five mother sauces are bechamel, velouté, espagnol, uh, tomato, and hollandaise. Hollandaise is the only one that does not use a roux as a thickening agent. And that is the roux's job. It's a thickening agent. And all a roux is, is equal parts fat and flour. So your fat could be any kind of fat. You could use lard, you can use Crisco, you can use vegetable oil, olive oil, any kind of oil. Um, but I like to use butter. So equal parts fat and flour. So I have a quarter cup of butter. I'm gonna put in a frying pan that's on medium heat. And then I'm gonna get a quarter cup of flour. So I'm gonna let this butter melt all the way and then I will add my flour to it. And then I'm just gonna be whisking like crazy. And then I'm just gonna add a little water today to kind of show you. So we'll also need to whip this bit towards the end. So with roux, there are three types of roux. You have a white roux, you have blonde roux, and you have a dark roux or sometimes it's called a brown roux. And Basically, all those are has to do with the color. It's the same recipe for each of them. Your white roux has the most thickening power. So if I were to put a quarter cup of, of white roux in with some milk, it would get me a really nice thick white cream sauce. Um, but like a dark brown roux, like if I'm making gumbo, it's gonna take maybe a cup of it to have the same thickening power as like a quarter cup of the white roux would. So all we're gonna do here is, once this butter gets nice and melted, we're gonna add our flour in. And the consistency of this is gonna change so much. So you can see we started with just that nice liquidy butter and then I added the flour and now it, it kind of thickens. I'm using my whisk so I don't get any big like thick chunks in here. And after like a minute or so, this is your, your white roux. So at this point, if I wanted to make a bechamel, I would just add some milk or cream to it and I'd have bechamel. If I let it cook, and you wanna let it cook for just a minute, you can kind of smell flour. And if you ever taste it, just plain flour, it's not very good. So we wanna let this cook just a second to get to that white roux. You wanna cook that flour taste out of there essentially. So that was our white roux. And then we're just gonna let it kind of keep going for a little bit longer here. And it's gonna start to darken up. And as it gets a little bit darker, then we're gonna have our blonde roux. It's kind of a medium color, maybe a light brown to it, really, really light brown. Don't wanna have your burner too high because if your burner's too high, your fat's gonna get too hot and then it's gonna separate. And if it separates, your roux is ruined, throw it out and start over but you wanna be whisking this constantly. And I can even tell my consistency that it's already kind of starting to thin out just a little bit. But this would be, so now I can see it's kind of getting a little dark. So there is a, I have my blonde roux now. And we're just gonna let this keep going and it's gonna get really dark. It can get like a dark brown in color and that would give me a dark roux. Dark roux, I'm probably gonna use for something like gumbo or maybe I'm gonna add some beef stock or something to it to get a nice espanol. That dark roux is gonna be like a nuttier flavor to it. And again, it's not gonna be as thick, but basically with any of my roux, I can take and add a liquid to it and it's gonna give me one of my five mother one of my four, four of the five mother sauces. So if I were to add chicken stock to my light roux, I would end up with the velouté. If I add milk to it, I get a bechamel. And if I added beef stock to it, I'm gonna get my espanol. And if I add tomato, I'm gonna get the tomato sauce. But all of those start with roux plus some kind of liquid is the base for all of those mother sauces. And once you have one of the mother sauces, you can add other things to it. 
Like if I'm gonna make mac and cheese, I'm gonna start with my basic white sauce of bechamel and I'm gonna add the milk and everything to it. And then that would give me a, uh, and then I add cheese and that's gonna give me mac and cheese. So it's starting to get pretty brown as you can see. So we're almost to a dark roux and you can let this go as dark as you want. So again, you have a light roux, a blonde roux, and your dark roux. And your light roux has the most thickening power. Your dark roux has the least amount of thickening power. And you can almost kind of tell because of just how thin it has become. For gumbo, you let this get super, super dark. So once you've got the roux the way you want it, you're gonna add your liquid and you add just a little bit at a time and it's really gonna change in consistency. So notice it was pretty thin. Now look at this right here. It gets all sorts of thick on me. And you can, once it kind of evens out, you can add a little bit more. Again, it's really thick. So you'd use a roux also for making gravy. And again, roux's job is to thicken things. So you can see how it's thickened up that water. And I'm just gonna keep adding roux into it or adding water into it until I get the thickness that I want. So whatever it is you're making, whatever thickness you want, you can see it got pretty thick now. I mean, it won't even slide on that pan. And again, you just add a little bit more water. And this is the part where you have to have some patience to let this, you know, incorporate in that, that cold liquid hitting the hot roux. It's going to cool it down. And then once that, that liquid heats up, then it's going to thicken back up again. So if you go and dump a full two cups in here, it's gonna take a long time for you to know if you have the thickness that you want. So that's why you add just a little bit at a time. I'm probably adding a quarter of a cup of liquid at a time. And if I have a, I started with a quarter cup of butter and a quarter cup of flour, I'm probably gonna use about two cups of liquid to get myself a consistency of a sauce that I want. And again, I'm still using my whisk because I don't want to have things real lumpy. Um, traditional like French cuisine, when you're adding like the cream and stuff to it, uh, a lot of times that cream is already warm preheated to help reduce the chance of there being lumps in it. So my, again, it's all incorporated in. I'm gonna add a little bit more. And you just keep doing this. Like I said, this takes a few minutes. You gotta have the patience. If I added some seasonings to this, I have a gravy. Wouldn't be a very good gravy because I'd rather use a stock in it instead of um, just plain water. But gravy is just a basic roux also. Again, you got mac and cheese that uses a basic white sauce. Um, you know, I've made lots of tomato soups that have tomato roux in it. You can make a Bernays sauce. That's one of your basic one of the things you can use with your mother sauces. Um, you have, I don't know, there's just so many different things you use this for, um, and which is why we're learning it. But mac and cheese is definitely the favorite in this class, and that's where we start. So this is kind of about the thickness that I want. So I'm going to go ahead and stop there. And... Again, and then as this sits and cools off, it's actually going to thicken and get like solid state almost. Like if you've ever made gravy and put it in the fridge and went to have leftovers the next day, it just comes out in a big old blob. That's because of the roux doing its job. So that's it, guys. That is the roux. You have light roux, blonde roux, and a dark roux. You add a liquid to it, and you pretty much get one of your five, four out of your five mother sauces. And they're used in almost everything. You've got mac and cheese, tomato sauce, like soups. You use roux in all the time, gumbo. Um, it, possibilities are endless with these mother sauces.
Enjoy, Spuds. Have a great day.